So for what to study, I think you get two main clues. You've got the intended learning outcomes, or the ILOs, which are the university's way of telling students and staff the things that the course is supposed to teach. So those are the things that you are potentially going to be examined on later. But there's also the lecture schedule. So the lectures give you a kind of skeleton building blocks of the things that your lecturers want you to know. Look at the ILOs, the intended learning outcomes, and look at the structure of the, the lecture series for any given module. Where well, the university is obviously one place that you can study. You've got the library with its 12 floors, 13 floors now of, of spaces. You've got the Macmillan Reading Room here, which has extra spaces. You've got Home, which has all of the books that you own, but each of them have good points and bad points, right? So you've got distractions at home. Can you stay off the internet? Can you avoid watching daytime television? You've got distractions at the university. Can you do that effectively without getting distracted by going for a coffee or chatting with friends? Uh, so I think there is a real benefit in finding a third place that's just your space where nobody else is going to be. The best advice I can give is somewhere that is comfortable for you and somewhere where you feel that you are effective and efficient. Public libraries are one good example because they've usually got great big desks which are there for people to take books out and, and spread them around. So if you don't sign up to Glasgow City Council's library Wi-Fi system, you've got one more place that's a bit more focused perhaps. So for when to study, society tells us that people that get up in the morning and are productive and effective in the morning are the best. I don't think that's how it works. In the years that I've been doing this job, I've never come across a conclusive piece of evidence that says the best time to study is in the morning or in the evening. The thing, the thing here is to say, when do I feel that I'm studying the best and when do I get the most out of my work? It, it depends far too much on what else you've got happening that day as well as just what your preference is. So for me, I prefer to study and work in the evening. And that has always been how I work. So for when to study, when can you concentrate the best, when do you have the best output? After a lecture, I think the most important thing that you can do is consolidate the material. Right? And consolidate means different things to different people. Look at your notes. Your notes are your understanding of what's just been said in the lecture. Make sure that that makes sense because that's going to form the primary material you're going to revise from in a month or a couple of months down the line for your exams. So make sure that you haven't missed any gaps. People will do that because lecturers move faster than they can write. Fill those gaps in now. After that, go off and look for the core texts, the core ideas, the core readings that the lecturer and the lecturer has touched on. Because your lecturers will usually have designed a lecture to be accompanied by something in a chapter. Go off and look for that. And if you have anything then you can add to your notes, do that, do that now. So you've got this folio of, of, of notes being built up. There are many more things you should do after a lecture, but I think that's, that's the first step. Always read with a pen in your hand. There is no point in reading in academia for reading's sake. Never sit down and just read it passively, right? because reading as well as rewriting things verbatim are down at the very bottom of the level of things that you can do in terms of effectiveness for studying. Maybe all you do is underline the textbook or whatever you're reading from. So we are reading to achieve particular things. So when we're reading in academia, we're reading to understand ideas and concepts, get information and ideas, gather evidence, and expand our understandings. So we're wanting you to do things like take notes, and take notes which are not verbatim, so not word by word copying out what's already written in the text. You don't need to rewrite it, it's already there in the original text. So whatever you think is the most important nuggets as you find them, and write them down somewhere. If you can transfer it to somewhere, a summary version that's just yours. Think about how do I take out core meanings, core concepts, core ideas, core discussion points, and that makes you reading an effective worthwhile strategy.